simple Bible study podcast with your host, the Bible guy, as we continue to go through the word of God, one verse, one chapter, one book at a time. Hey, thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you watching these videos and, and, and joining us as we go through the word of God. Uh, if you, if you, if, if the study is a blessing to you, make sure that you uh, uh, subscribe and, and share and hit the thumbs up and all those good things. And if it's not a blessing to you, well, no problem. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, just, uh, keep listening. Maybe it will become one, right? Uh, so <laughs> we thank you again for joining us. We're going to open up in the word of prayer, and then we're going to get into this 14th chapter of the book of Matthew. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to go through your word. It is a honor and a blessing to be able to do so. We pray, God, for each and every listener that you would give them what they have come here for, and that is your word and a blessing on their life. We pray, God, just your blessing over this study. In Jesus' name, amen. And so last time we we set the stage for the 14th chapter of, of Matthew, but we didn't get into the chapter, uh, and so shame on me for that. Uh, but we're going to do that right now, and I'm going to start reading. Um, at that time, Herod the Tetrarch, Tetrarch just means a ruler, heard of the fame of Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He's risen from the dead. Therefore, mighty works do show themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. But John said to him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias, uh, his niece, <laughs> danced before them and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a charger or a dish. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. And so if you listen last time, uh, we explained how uh, Matthew has laid out in this 14th chapter uh, two rulers. One is a ruler uh, that represents uh, the flesh, uh, Herod being a descendant of Esau, who was the, the notoriously known man of the flesh in Scripture, uh, the man who traded the blessing of God for a little bowl of soup. He cared so little about the things of the Spirit. And then we're going to see the other ruler, which is Jesus Christ, a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit of God, according to the book of Acts. And so we're looking at this, this first ruler, Herod, in the first 12 verses here. And so, um, you know, he, he represents all of the things of the flesh. And let's turn to Galatians, the fifth chapter, uh, where we see the things of the flesh listed, the things of the uh, when we say the flesh, we mean, of course, the, the, the appetites and tastes of the body that we live in, the unregenerate body. When you and I are saved, our spirit becomes alive. The spirit is the part of us that connects us to God. And so, hallelujah, the spirit is back to life. We can commune with God. We can live with God. But unfortunately, the body is not redeemed. It still has the same sinful tastes and desires, which now creates a war between the spirit and the flesh. Uh, by the way, one day we'll be given new bodies, as, as promised in the scripture, that, and our bodies will be renewed at that time. And at that time, 
this war will be over with. The spirit will rule over. But that's that's for another study. But the, the fifth chapter of Galatians at the 19th verse says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, which is like sensuality, sensual things, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, uh, which is like disputes and, and divisions or jealousies. Emulation is like jealousy, wrath, strife, seditions uh, or divisions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so Paul has given us a, a, a very extensive list of the works of the flesh, although it's not an exhaustive list. Now, what do we mean? We mean this. He's listed a lot of things that the flesh is guilty of and sinful things that we do, but it is by no means all <laughs> of the things that we do uh, uh, that are sinful listed there. And so uh, we're gonna, let's look at this, this man of the flesh Herod, uh, verse 2 says, he said to his servants, this is John the Baptist risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works are shown in him. Now, he's paranoid. <laughs> That's why he gives this ridiculous, uh, this ridiculous uh, explanation of what he's seeing. He thinks that John the Baptist has raised from the dead. He's paranoid and he's guilty. He knows he has done wrong. And I want to put out a point here. Do you know it is fleshly and downright sinful? to go around carrying, carrying guilt for your past. The Bible says you have been justified if you trust in Christ. At Romans, the fifth chapter and the first verse, it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. At Romans 8, 8 and 1, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in, uh, to those who are in Christ, and then of course at First John one and nine, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But you hanging on to your past and what you did, no, I did this and I, I did that, is saying that the Word of God is wrong, that Jesus' work on the cross is not enough. It is the flesh saying, I can't be forgiven, or I did too much. It is, it is the flesh saying, I need to pay for my own sin uh, with, the, with the sacrifice of guilt. <laughs> well, that's fleshly. That is, that is pride talking. Put it on the altar. Give it to God and accept his forgiveness. If you've done somebody wrong, go and ask them for their forgiveness. If they give it to you, great. If they don't, know that the one who matters most has given it to you. He forgives. And so don't go around carrying guilt like Herod does here. It's a fleshly thing to do that, to say that the work of Christ is not enough to cover your sins. Herod here is paranoid and he's guilty. He's also afraid. <laughs> He's afraid. He knows he's done wrong. He knows he deserves uh, 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 what, you know, he deserves to pay for what he's done. Uh, and so he's, he's walking around fearful. And there's nothing more fearful, I think, than walking around in fear all the time. Oh, we're watching the news, and the news has got you all up in arms, and 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 the, and everything going on with the with the um, pandemic has got us all uh, up in arms and afraid, and we 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 we're scared of what's going to happen next. But listen to Second Timothy chapter one, uh, verse seven: For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. A good uh, preacher friend of mine, Pastor Clint, Pastor Clint Davis, he once said something that I've always remembered. He said, fear or worry is temporary atheism. For that time that you're sitting around in fear and you're sitting around worrying about it, that is during that time, for however long it is, you don't believe you have a God. <laughs> because if you believe you have a God, you know it's all in his hands. 
Now, that's a reminder to me, too, because I, I walk around in worry sometimes myself. But you see, I have to remind myself that I have a God who is in firm control of all things and at all times. And to get out of my flesh, which wants to sit around and worry and be afraid of what's going to come and get into the spirit, which says it's all in God's hands. And so come out of your flesh, come out of your flesh, <laughs> get in the spirit and get, get your mind back right and get you, get that sound mind right. And there at verse three, it says, Herod laid hold of John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. He married his brother's wife, which was contrary to the law. That's sexual sin. That's fornication and adultery. Uh, uh, and, and, and that is, uh, there's nothing more fleshly than the, the, the sexual sins. And we're going to talk about that a little more when we get a little further down in the book. But then he takes revenge on John uh, uh, by putting him in the prison. He puts him in the prison and takes revenge on him. And there's nothing more fleshly <laughs> than taking revenge on our enemies. Listen to uh, uh, Paul at Romans, the 12th chapter. Uh, the 12th chapter and the 19th verse says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. Now, this is a spiritual thing to do. Avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto, the wrath, unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. And if he thirst, give him drink, for in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire, on his head, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's the way to do it in the spirit. <laughs> the fleshly way is to do what Herod is doing here, and that's taking revenge. But the spiritual way is to not take revenge, but do good to your enemies and let the Lord handle them. And so this man of the flesh, he, he's on one, as they say. <laughs> he is really showing us the flesh. Look at the fifth verse here. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted John as a prophet. He is worried about what people think. That is fleshly. Verse 9, and the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake and men which sat with him. At me, he commanded it to be given her. He commanded the head of John the Baptist cut off be, again because he was always concerned about what people think. People think. I know people right now who are always up in arms about what people are going to think about them. There is nothing more fleshly than trying to control what people think about you. You cannot control <laughs> what people are going to say about you and think about you. And to try and do so is only going to make you miserable and it's only pleasing to the flesh as you fool yourself into thinking that you're controlling that. Listen to the apostles at Acts, the fifth chapter, the 27th verse. And when they had brought them, the apostles, and set them before the council and the high priest, asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name, the name of Jesus? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God. <laughs> rather than man. In other words, we ain't worrying about what you think of us. We are going to do what God says. And that's the spiritual thing to do. The fleshly thing to do is to be always concerned about what people think of you. Get out of your flesh and move on. <laughs> move on and just be concerned about what God says about you. Verse 6 says, when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced. She did a, a, a sensual dance. We read about sensuality, lasciviousness, and that list of, of the, the, uh, the, the works of the flesh. But that's more sexual sin, you see. Uh, that, 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 that one comes up over and over again. And, and the Apostle Paul gives a, a, a really stern warning about sexual sin because the flesh is really tempted by that. Oh, especially in this day and age, they got sex in everything. Sex to sell your hamburgers. Sex in the, uh, in, the, in the commercials to sell your cars. Sex all over the place. Sex on billboards. Sex on, on the magazine cover when 
in the supermarkets. It's all what a what a lustful culture and a fleshly culture we live in. But listen to the Apostle Paul at 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter and the 18th verse. He says, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without or outside the body. But he that committeth fornication or sexual sin sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Paul says, run <laughs> from sexual sin, flee from sexual sin, flee from those things that come up or those little images that come up on the TV. Hit, get, grab the remote. Don't stare. Don't look and stare at that stuff. Run like Joseph ran when uh, Potiphar's wife tried to tried to seduce him. He said, he said he got up out, out of there running, and she grabbed his drawers off. <laughs> He was running so hard, but he was gone out the door while she was holding his drawers in her hand. Run, flee from fornication. And so we, we could go through even more of these, but we can see this. Herod is a fleshly man. And you know who else is a fleshly person? You are. <laughs> and I am. We want to follow and we are tempted to be led by the flesh. Paul said it best in Romans chapter 7 when he said, but I want to do right. Wrong is always they're pulling me in the direction of the flesh. But you see, we can resist the flesh. How can we do it? How can we resist the flesh? We can do it by faith and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, "Ye, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And if Christ be in you, then the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And then again, Paul says in Romans, the sixth chapter, the 11th verse, likewise, Reckon, now that's an old Texas word, reckon yourselves, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead and be under sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I reckon. Reckon means I believe, I'm, or I'm going to act like, <laughs> I'm going to act like my, my body is dead, my spirit is in control, and that's how you overcome this old sinful flesh. Amen. We've looked at this fleshly hair rod today. I'm sick of him already, just like I'm sick of my own flesh. <laughs> Next time, we're going to look at the man of the spirit, the man Christ Jesus. Until then, thank you so much for joining us.